Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now you join me with this car. This has to be the most advanced Mini ever made by the company. It's the brand new Mini Countryman and this is their PHEV version. But to give it its full title, it's the Mini Countryman Cooper S E all four PHEV. And what I want to do over the course of this video, this I think is going to be the future of the Minis going forward. So what we need to know really is, what is a PHEV? Is this car for you? And what on earth does that very long name actually mean? Let's start off with the front of this car. It looks like really all the other Mini Countrymans, which is a, a good thing. The headlights, which again is the same on all of the Mini Countrymen, they're actually rectangular and the others are round. We've got the S badge denoting this is the Cooper S, but it's in green. So that does show it's a green version PHEV, new Mini logo. So everything about that is, well, it's basically the same. The one feature which really makes this stand out that it is something different is this here. This is the charging port. So you just press on that, it opens up, and this is where you'd plug this either into a fast charger, which you can get in car parks, you can get them fit to your house as well, or just plug it into the, the mains. And that takes three and a half hours to fully charge uh, with the fast charger, or about eight hours of normal mains. So we're going to close that. There's also one around the other side, but that's just for symmetry. There's nothing going on over there. We've got the all four, denoting this is four wheel drive. It's not your traditional four wheel drive, but we're going to have a chat about that once we're out on the road. Up here, you've got your traditional roof rack and lots of this you can customize as well. Let's have a look around the back. If you're after a small SUV, then boot space is really, really important to you. So if we open up the back of this car, we're greeted with 405 litres of storage. Now the petrol variant of this car has 450, so you do lose a bit because of the batteries and electric motors. But even so, there's quite a lot of room. The back splits down, it's a 40-20-40 split, and that gives you around 1400 litres of storage. Under here, we've got a small cubby hole, so you could bits under there, and also you've got your charger. So really, it looks like every other countryman, other than the green S and the E on the back. You wouldn't really notice it's any different. So if you're after an SUV and want to stick with the Mini brand, this is seems pretty good from the outside, doesn't it? So let's hop in the car, take it out for a drive, because that's really important as well. Well, we've had a look around the outside. So let's come into the warm and have a look around the inside of this car. Welcome to the inside of the Mini Countryman PHEV. Now you may think, hang on, I recognize that interior. Doesn't it look exactly the same as the others? And you'll be right, it does. It's nearly identical to the other Countryman uh, Cooper I drove. And in fact, the entire Mini range feels very, very familiar. The two main differences that you can see at the moment, we've got a start-stop and that's in green. That's the same green as on the Cooper S and the um, E logo and also around the charge port. And most important difference down here, we've got a drive mode change. And we're gonna have a look at that when out on the road because it will make far more sense, but that's basically changing between electric and hybrid. Inside wise, it's the same mini quality. The steering wheel, you've got cruise control on one side and you've got controls for the uh, stereo and voice control. Perfect. Talking of infotainment system, this large one here, that's the standard 6.6 .6 inch. Upgrade to the 8.8 .8 and you get a host of new features. And generally it's the same mini feel. We've got dual climate control, various rocker switches down here. This has got the six speed automatic box. This model starts off at 33,000 pounds. Get a bit excited as I did on the configurator, tick every option you want. And this goes to 44,000. Now that is a lot of money. Would you pay 44,000? Even 33 is above 
uh, 7,000 above what the standard petrol one is. So I hope this has got something special about it. Let's take this out on the road and see, can it justify that higher price point and what a hybrid's all about? We've seen the car from the outside, had a quick look around in here. But importantly, we need to know what is this hybrid car like out on the road? To start the thing, we've got the traditional start switch. But unlike any other Mini, it makes absolutely no noise at all. So we'll put it in to drive. We'll take off the parking brake. And that's it. It's as simple as that. This might be the most advanced car that Mini make, but it's not really difficult to drive, which is which is a good thing. We've got a driving mode switch. It's on the left. It's just down by the start button. So you can put that in different modes. The three different modes you've got, by default it starts in auto e-drive. Now that means that it will use a combination of both electric and petrol. Up to 50 miles an hour, it will try and favour the electric where it can. If you require a bit more power, maybe for overtaking, going up hills, it will automatically start using both electric and petrol. If your electric battery starts getting a bit low, it will also charge it. So that's fantastic. And that's the easiest one to put it in, just point and go. The other options you've got, you've got Max E-Drive. Now that means it will only use the electric part of the engine up to 78 miles an hour. So that's perfect if you're going around town, maybe a short commute to work, and that's absolutely perfect for that. You've got none of this horrible emission stuff going on, especially if you live in London, you won't be paying the congestion charge. If you're out of town, you've been doing mainly motorways, and you know you're gonna come back in into a city where you want it in just electric mode, you can flick it down and put it in something called save. Now, what will happen with save mode, it will only use the petrol engine and the rest of the engine it will use to recharge the batteries in the back. So when you're just outside, outside wherever you live, you can flick it over to the E mode and just use your electricity. So it's really, really simple to use. So we were going to discuss about why on earth this car's got such a long name. Let's start with the first bit. Mini Countryman. Well that's perfectly normal, they do the 1.5 Cooper, they do the 2 litre Cooper S. The next bit, E. Well E is the electric part of it and that's where this thing gets a bit more interesting. The rear wheels are driven by a single 87 bhp electric motor and the batteries are under the back seat so they don't take up too much room. Now we've covered the e bits, all four, well this is four wheel drive but it's not in the traditional sense of four wheel drive. Most four wheel drives will have a mechanical linkage between the front and the back, this doesn't have that at all. The electric motor drives just the rear wheels and the petrol the front. And there's some clever software that determines what the best combination is going to be. So you don't have to worry about it. So it's slightly different. If you put it in E mode on the other hand, you've got BMW's, well I should say Mini, their first ever rear wheel drive car. So there's two firsts going on with this. Um, so you can see where this name has come from. The last bit, plug-in hybrid. Now, that means that you can go home, you plug the car into, into the mains like you would do any other device and leave it to charge 
throughout the day or overnight. It takes about eight hours to fully charge this car. And then if you've got a fast charging station, I think you can actually get these fitted at home as well. It will take three and a half hours. A lot of businesses now are actually fitting these in their car park so you can use the company electricity to charge your car. So the range on this, they reckon is around 17, 18 miles. Well, that's their claim figure. It'd be interesting to know what the real life figure is going to be. And luckily, I'll do a video on that as well. So go and watch that and see what you think the real world figures are actually going to be. We really do need to have a chat about the performance of this car. It wears the Cooper S badge on the back. But the engine isn't from a Cooper S, it's actually from a Mini Cooper. So this has got the 1.5 litre turbo, whereas the Mini Cooper S has a 2 litre turbo. So why on earth does it think it can wear a Cooper S badge? I'll tell you why. In the back of this car, we've got an electric engine. It's putting out another 87 brake horsepower. So in total, this car is nearly the same as the JCW model. It will do 60 in 6.8 seconds. Now that is considerably faster than the Cooper S and not far behind the JCW model. So I do think it deserves to wear that Cooper S badge. Four wheel drive means it sticks to the road. It's got great handling, even though you sit a bit higher. So I think we need to go and find somewhere a bit more open, a bit quieter and Let's have a look at what this 0 to 60 time is actually going to be in this car. Before dropping this back to mini charges in Halsham, I really need to know who on earth would buy one of these things. They're £7,000 more than the equivalent Cooper. What makes this so special that you'd want to spend that extra money? Well, driving it and looking at what it does, I think if you're doing a lot shorter journey, so under 19 miles a day and live in a town, this car makes perfect sense. You can get away with not going to the petrol station, just top it up from the mains at home, and that would be absolutely perfect. It would save you a lot of money, and it's a lot greener for the environment. Company car tax wise as well, this particular model is only 9% benefit in kind. The equivalent Cooper model is 22%. So you're not only going to save money in fuel, you're also going to save money on company car tax and that has to be a good thing. Feels exactly like every other countryman. So I think in summary, if you're doing shorter journeys and it's a company car especially, this does make an awful loss of sense. I don't know what you guys think, put in the comments down below. And on that note guys, I'm going to call this video to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And remember to click on that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.